So it's uh, we're catching up in Thursday, February 21st. Chapter 6, Human Action Uncertainty. I haven't read these questions yet. Mm -hmm. You want to go first? Yeah, sure. Um, okay, so section 1, Uncertainty and Acting. So, what is the role of uncertainty in the field of action? Um, well, uh, action... In order for an action to be required, like uncertainty is required for action. Otherwise, you wouldn't be acting. You would just be like uh, a cog in a machine. Right. You know what's going to happen. You need to have uncertainty in order to make an action. I think that's good. Yeah. So, are actions always risky, and why? Um. Yeah, I would say so. You don't always know the outcome. Right, because uncertainty. Yeah, things are unpredictable. Meaning of probability. Comment. The treatment of probability has been confused by the mathematicians. Why did John Stuart Mill use the term the real opprobrium of mathematics in reference to the calculus of probability? I think it's because probability has been misused across a wide variety of fields um, and I mean it goes in further typically it's the confusion between class probability and case probability right um, and so people act with a certainty of having mathematical proof behind them where their uh, their assumptions just are no good because they're uh, they're using probability in the wrong way. They're confusing frequency with probability. Yeah, exactly. Um, example, like, oh, roulette player says it landed on red last ten times, therefore it's going to end on black next time because it's mm -hmm. so unlikely the probability of that happening, again, is so unlikely that it can't happen, but probability is still 50-50. Right. Okay, um, class probability. What is the definition of class probability? So, it would be frequency. Um, it would be like, um, you have a whole class of people, or I guess they use lottery tickets here. Um, so, if, you know, you have a hundred lottery tickets and five are winners, you could say the, the class probability of a ticket being um, the chosen is 5%. Right. And, um, how is that, how is that, this isn't one of the questions, I guess, that, no, they will get to it, but how does that differ, let's skip, to case probability? In, in contrast, that's like what, a, on a case-by-case -case basis, like a doctor, the example yeah. was that a, a doctor can see uh, a class probability of mm -hmm. a young man who's afflicted with an illness having a 70% chance of success in beating it, but then the case probability would be like he knows the man, he knows the individual, and is like, you have a 90% chance because you're like... You're right. really healthy. Yeah, because everyone's an individual. Um, right. Like the lottery example is easy because there's only really one dimension to it. Mm. Whereas health, it's what do you eat, how do you exercise, what are your genes. Right. There's so many different ways. There's so many different classes that mm. like they make up the different case. For yeah, you. exactly. Okay. Skipping back to class probability, what supplemental information can we get from the calculus of probability? Hmm. So, you can get, I don't know if they talked about this in the, the chapter, but this, you can get your expected return. If you know, um, you know, the chances of you winning, um, on a roulette wheel, 
between red or black is slightly below 50% because there's a green slot. Uh, um, you can, and if you bet a dollar, your expected return is, you know, 49 cents or whatever. Um, that's what I, what do you think? I'm not sure what they talked about in the book about this. What supplemental information can we get from the calculus of probability? What you said makes sense to me. There's, there's other information that we can glean from it. Let's see if there's uh, any knowledge to be gained in the summary. Class probability. In class probability, we know everything about the entire class of events or phenomena, but we do, but we, but we know nothing particular about the individuals making up the class. For example, if we roll a fair die, we know the entire class of possible outcomes, but we don't know anything about the particular outcome of the next roll, save that it will be an element of the entire class. The formal symbols of operations of the calculus probability allow the manipulation of this knowledge, but they do not enhance it. The formal symbols and operations of the calculus of probability allow the manipulation of this knowledge, but they do not enhance it. So, so yeah, I think the expected outcome, like, so I, I learned, we learned nothing new from calculating the expected return um, from the roulette spin, mm -hmm. but we manipulated it in a way so it's it's useful when it, you're gambling. It helps us describe what's happening. I mm -hmm. think so. What supplementary information can we get from the calculus of probability? My estimation is is this is a trick question. The answer is nothing. We can't we can't gain any new knowledge about um, the situation of of the from the calculus of probability only to describe with mathematical symbols that which we already know. The, right. The probability remains one-sixth for a die roll. Okay. How does the insurance business differ from the gambling? Uh, the difference between a gambler and an insurer is not that one uses mathematical techniques, rather an insurer must pool the risks by incorporating the entire class or a reasonable approximation of it. If a life insurance company sells only policies to a handful of people, it is gambling, no matter how sophisticated its actuarial methods. So, it, an insurer pools the risks by incorporating the entire class. Whereas a, a gambler mm -hmm. can't can't pool, you, it wouldn't make sense to buy all of the lottery tickets right. available because you would definitely lose on that. Yep. Does insurance belong to the class? The does insurance belong to the field of class probability? Well, I would say yes, because it incorporates all of the people from a particular class. It can't, it, it's not about, well... <clears throat> yeah, well, life insurance insures all people. Car insurance insures cars on the road, so their models are based on the frequency of car accidents, or the frequency based on the age at which people die. Yeah, even though they are insuring the individual. Right. That's what gives me a little bit of pause. But their question. their bottom line does rely on probability. For instance, um, like disaster insurance. If there's a year with um, a lot of hurricanes that abnormally cause a lot of destruction, insurance companies don't make as much money. Right. So there is some chance in how much money they make. Hmm. Hmm. But I think the goal of their insurance company is to 
hedge as best they can every every end. So they they want a business model that's not dependent on probability as as cl as much as they can. Yeah, it almost seems like uh, I don't know if this is is accurate according to the text, but it almost seems like insurance companies would be uh, not gamblers because they use the probability in their favor. So they know they only take a bet where the odds are in their favor, whereas a gambler only takes a bet where the odds are against him. Because yeah. that's where the... So I think they'd be... You could be a gambler, you could be a speculator, you could be an engineer. Right. And they're definitely speculators. They can't be an engineer because there's just no way of telling if you sell life insurance policy when someone will die. Yeah. So there is some uncertainty in selling a life insurance policy. Mm. But they can be quote unquote experts on when someone will die. Yeah, they try and engineer it as much as possible. Right. What are the main differences between case probability and class probability. Where are we? Oh, the next page. Oh, uh, I think we skipped four, one. Four. Well, we skipped down to that. What is the definition of case oh. probability? Okay. It's a probability of uh, an individual case, right. of, a, of a, a single single person taking into account the, uh, let's see, applicable when we know some of the factors that will affect a particular event, but we're ignorant of other factors that will also influence the outcome. So, um, probability is less certain with case probability. Less certain. Yeah, like you can't you can't say that it's going to be one sixth, like a dice like a die roll. Um, with case probability, there are other factors that determine it. It's sort of like a die roll on an uneven. Mm -hmm. bumpy ground or something like that right. or some other thing. I think that's really good, the, that extra element. Yeah. So like, I guess in a vacuum, in like, I guess that's even impossible because like you then you have to think about gravity and like all the different factors. Like you could keep, in a perfect vacuum in space, a dice roll is, the, the case probability is the same as class probability that's completely unrealistic. Yeah, or maybe a uh, case probability of a, of a die roll um, by handmade die that you're attempting to weigh down the six. Yeah. You know, where you're like, I really want... Right. Yeah. Or you're trying to make a certain outcome happen. Um, let's see. What is the difference between luck gambling, speculation, and risk. Well, everyone has to deal with luck. It's a part of uncertainty, the uncertainty of being alive. We all hope that we don't get hit by a bus or like struck by lightning, mm -hmm. which is just luck. And then gambling is an action that a person takes just letting it ride with no knowledge I would say there's no attempt to um, achieve the outcome through skill or knowledge that you want it's kind of just letting the universe decide when he risks money on an outcome where he knows only the frequencies of the various elements of the class he is gambling. Mm -hmm. So on, when you only, when it's pure class probability, like yeah. dice rolls. So if you know some of the factors you're betting, if you don't know any of the factors, only the class factors, then you're gambling. If you don't know the factors <clears throat> you're betting, 
Yeah, no, no, no. If you do know some factors, you're betting. You're like, well, blue team has won a bunch of times against yellow team, so in the next case, I'm betting that blue team's gonna win because I know I have some knowledge about it. About the blue team? Yeah, about the blue team's ability to beat yellow team. But if I'm from betting, just that, from that frequency. Yeah. Uh, I'm not. So, didn't you just read the definition of gambling as knowing nothing but frequency? Oh yeah. Mm. So. I think betting and gambling are the same thing. Well, here it says, when a man risks money on an outcome, where he knows some of the factors involved, he is betting. When he risks money on an outcome. Oh. Where he knows only the frequency of the various elements of the class, he is gambling. Uh, okay. So I would say... I would say betting is speculation, then. Like that. Betting is, is speculation, yeah, I would agree with that. It says yeah. the, the two activities roughly match up with the case versus class probability mm -hmm. distinction. To play a game is a special type of action... Though the reverse is not true, not all actions can be usefully described as part of a game. Um, I would say risk is the probability of the outcome uh, not favorable, favorable to you. Yes. Yeah. What, what you might lose. Mm-hmm. Why isn't, okay, a numerical evaluation <clears throat> of case probability. Why isn't case probability open to numerical evaluation? Because it's impossible to know all the factors in a single case. Like, if you're rolling a dice on a flat table, it might seem flat, but you don't know if it's a perfect dice, you don't know if it's a perfectly flat table. So, any, and they, they talked about this with the models in physics, like, they're pretty accurate, and so we can use them, but to, it's impossible to, like, have all the right factors. Yeah, know? seems, seems right to me. There's too many variables. Mm -hmm. Why is understanding important for problems of case probability? Because that's, I mean, if you can't explain it with numbers, you need to be able to understand, I guess, the problem in general. I thought a lot about, like, Bitcoin and, like, buying cryptocurrencies, because you always hear the word speculation. Yeah. And I guess it is a speculation buying these assets at, um a price hoping that they will appreciate over time. It's a speculation, but it's with the background knowledge that it's better money and it'll, it, so it is speculation because you don't know what's the future, but um, you understand the, the underlying problem for this case and so you're going with that outcome. Yeah, I would say the more understanding one has of Bitcoin, or of the of the um, like its place in the world, like uh, in monetary theory and in, in savings and in investments and speculate, like the more information, the more better understanding <clears throat> one can have, the better one's ability to correctly predict uh, or increase their odds of, of the case probability being correct, right? Right. Um, betting, gambling, and playing games. What are the differences between betting and gambling? How does gambling become betting? So I think we've covered that. Yeah, but why are they asking it again? Well, when a man risks money on an outcome where he knows oh yeah so we did we i read this exactly that's weird um 
So what was it again? The differences between betting and gambling. Yeah. Betting, you know some things. Gambling, yeah. it's all case. Right. Uh, it's I mean, it's all uh, class mm -hmm. probability. How does gambling become betting? Knowledge is gained. I guess. Yeah, like maybe um, you know you know something about the breed of the horse or its record mm. or whatever. You start to know something about the factors involved. Mm. Like oh, so this for, you're betting on the fact that this horse is fast or that this type of horse runs really well on this type of track. Yeah. Is betting an action? Is gambling an action? I think they both are. Uh, but the, uh, the ends is different for both. And gambling, the ends is the stimulation and the fun of placing money. Or that thrill, if you will. And the ends for betting is to profit. Hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah because some people go to the casino just to have fun, knowing they will lose. Some people go to the casino to profit. Right. Hmm. Yeah. Right. It's uh, gambling is more like a game. Mm-hmm. Why do psychologists have a tendency to confuse combat and competition? Uh, because in both cases, it appears that the um, contenders are out to destroy each other. So, but what's the difference between combat and competition? The, uh, the difference is, in competition, they're not necessarily looking to destroy each other. It's just, uh, there's a game being played. But if you're looking to win, wouldn't it be better if your opponent was destroyed? Not necessarily. The two people in competition can benefit from each other's success. Uh, Whereas so in combat, it's, uh, okay. it's so all it's a, destruction. So there's like, it's, it's, the, it's the zero sum game. I think so, but psychologists confuse combat and competition because the appearance from the outside seems like the two in competition want to destroy each other when really they they can they can both succeed. Mm -hmm. I think I mean maybe he has more to say on that. Yeah, they talked about in the chapter a lot about um, I forget what I was going to say but yeah I think it's the difference between a zero sum game and a cooperative game so I, I think it makes sense to me The attempt to model the market economy with game theory is misleading because in most games the participants try to beat their opponents while in a market, all participants benefit. Why is it inappropriate to use military terms for the description of business operations? Same thing. Right. It's combat versus competition. Yeah, we all benefit from participating in, in the market. Praxeological prediction. What? can be predicted with the aid of praxeological knowledge. Praxeology can make certain predictions about the future, but they are necessarily qualitative. For example, it can tell us that other things equal. A fall in the demand for apples will lead to a lower price of apples. But praxeology alone can never tell us that, say, a particular change will yield a 9% drop in apple prices. So it can tell you 
qualitatively what will change, but not quantitatively. Okay. So people demand less apples, price of apples is going to fall. How much? We don't really know. So what distinguishes quantitative approaches from qualitative ones? The uh, description of like what is happening versus how much of what is happening. Mm -hmm. Fallen apple prices versus 9% fallen apple prices. Bam, that's the end. Cool. Let's read, I want to just cover why it matters because I didn't actually read that. And it might be useful. In this short chapter, Mises accomplishes several things. First, he establishes the, necess uh, the necessary connection between action and uncertainty. Inasmuch as neoclassical economics ignored uncertainty for many decades, this alone is important. But beyond that, Mises shows the limitations of formal mathematical approaches to probability. This has continuing relevance because the mainstream economists answered the criticisms of perfect information by simply pushing the problem back one step. Instead of assuming that the agents in their models knew the future perfectly, they assumed that their agents knew the exact probability distributions of random variables in the models, which in turn would determine future outcomes. Israel Kurzer wrote, uh, has written extensively on this non-solution to the problem. For a third contribution, Mises nonchalantly offers a brilliant approach to defining class probability itself, and, as an aside, points out the certainty, or circularity, in conventional mathematical treatments. Okay, good. So, uncertainty. It's a big part of human action. Right. I guess that's the gist. <laughs> There's uncertainty in all, there's it, uncertainty in life. It was crazy how this was written in the 50s, or was that when it was written? I don't know. Um, but it, I, when they talk about mainstream, it seems like that mainstream hasn't really changed in the last however many years. 1949. Yeah, so... 70 years later, and when he says mainstream, he could very well be talking about people on CNBC right now. Still talking about, um, what exactly? Talking about, um, knowing the distribution of random variables in the models. Yeah, they, well... Sorry, go ahead. They assume that, you know, low unemployment will mean, like, uh, low inflation. Or yeah, I, I see the relevance coming um, with regard to central planning. He starts talking about, in the end, how because, um, like, central planners think they know the, the probabilities of uh, of certain things that they'll know how people will act and they can treat people as like cogs in a machine mm -hmm. but humans there's uncertainty in, in our actions and so they can't just tweak some knobs and pull some levers over here and make certain actions happen out, out the other end um, they're, they're still gambling I guess with the Right. With how people are going to act. It seems like just the central bank is such an absurd idea. <laughs> right, like <laughs> people are going to... Like, how would that ever work? Well, I guess the, the central bank's an interesting case because you've got class probability in the sense that if you lower central bank interest rates, then people will generally spend more rather than save more. Mm -hmm. But by how much, you don't really know. Right. 
And on a case-by-case -case basis, you don't really know. Uh, because some people might see that and say, okay, this means heavy inflation. Instead of spending a lot, which most people would probably do, I'm going to go buy gold and save a lot. Right. Because it's going to destroy all the money, so... You don't know what people are going to do. You can't make people do certain things. Yeah, and it's like you're... The, the treaty people like my cogs in a machine, but also that machine is so complex. Yeah. In the first place. It's a lot it's of like, factors. Yeah, it's not even like a simple machine that you're probably going to operate. It's just like this huge machine that no one even understands. Right. This was really good. Yeah. Again, I'm really glad you suggested we do this. What's the next chapter? Action within the world. Action within the world. Great.